All right, I think we're up. Hopefully we're up. So I've just recorded the, the sort of ad for this that I will put on the channel after this stream goes up. So what's happening is I bought this kit. I know another RC car. Uh, basically, I bought this car because I suck at driving RC cars. And I wanted something that I wouldn't be upset if I crashed. This was the cheapest Tamiya kit available. So uh, that's what I've got. To go with it, I've got a couple of things because obviously, or not obviously, if you don't know these kits, and I really don't, uh, I've been told that this is probably not a great kit to start with because it's quite underpowered. So to kind of solve that a little bit, I'm going to run it on lithium batteries like my other cars. I'm also borrowed this motor from another car because i've got a uh, a brushless uh motor and esc combo to go in it uh for people that don't know brushless equals faster lithium also equals faster uh so there will be some bits that i have to put in this um i've got somewhere around here i've got a servo that needs to go in and some other bits and bobs i've also got a uh, look i've got a bearing kit that i bought for it uh, again, to make it similar to the other cars, and I've also got this um, Dumbo RC transmitter to go with it as well. So I'm hoping with all that stuff that this will at least make an interesting build and uh, if people want to watch along while that happens, that's great. If you don't want to watch along, that's fine. I have many other videos. You might want to check some of those out and see if any of those are of any more interest to you. Um, but yeah. I don't know, I've just posed the question to the community tonight. Would you rather this become an RC channel or would you rather the RC content uh, become its own thing? Um, I'm not sure. My students have just discovered this channel. So I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep the channel. I'm hoping that whoever has discovered it, you know, just does, you know, if they discover it and they watch it and they enjoy it, great. If they don't enjoy it, there's no pressure. Please feel free to unsubscribe and do whatever whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm just really hoping that everyone sort of behaves in some kind of reasonable manner and that it doesn't force my hand to, to hit the delete button. If I do have to delete the channel, which would be a shame because I'm almost at that stage where growth is kind of nice and gradual, uh, I think what I'd probably do is rebirth as uh, an RC-related channel because that kind of content can happen on a bench. I don't need to show my face, uh, and I could probably obscure my name somewhat. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But in the meantime, let's um, crack this open and see what's inside it. My son's had a look at this when I was away, but I haven't. I went to the. Uh, I went to a couple of things. I went to a 3D printing. Oh, there's a there's the driver. There's the, uh, the pilot, so he has to get put together, lovely. Uh, it's got, oh gosh, this is gearbox, gearbox housing, I think. Nice. All right, so it's a clear body. I don't have black paint. Well, I do have some black paint, but I've got a lot of colors left over from my other builds when I was doing the Ford, so I'm thinking what I might do is a 2004 uh, vacuum pull. Uh, what I'm thinking I might do is actually do this in maybe a blue or a purple. That might look cool. There's, this is the sort of tub type chassis, uh, very similar to the TTO2. There's the, uh, the spoiler, much thicker uh, Lexan than the other bodies that I've done. Cool. Someone's been in here and had a look what's in here. There is um, some damper oil. Oh, do we have oil-filled shocks to do something with? That looks like some oil-filled shocks. Now, this motor, this is a genuine Tamiya motor. I would like to check. Where did I put the motor? Underneath all this stuff. Did I put it back there? No. Where did I put the motor? Can't remember. So we've got all the gearbox stuff. So this is actually all the parts. Um, so that will be necessary uh, probably tonight to start with. I doubt I will need 
I doubt I'll need the body. Uh, I think probably trimming the body will end up being its own episode. So there's all the sprues. I'll move those out of the way. And there's our front and rear tire packages. Lovely. The decals, uh, I doubt I will need those. There's the, the all-important destructions. Okay, so I'll put those back in. I will put the body back in. I don't think I'll need that tonight. I won't need the wheels and tyres tonight. Everything else is a maybe, oh, probably apart from the driver. I don't think I'll need the driver tonight, but well, I might need the roll cage and stuff. I'll see. It really depends. I won't need the spoiler. Will I? All right, so let me move this stuff out of the way. I think I've just found the motor. Put the sprues over here on the 3D printer while I put the lid back on this. And that was the box, I promise. Get that out of the way. I would also like to get a fan on in here because it is a bit warm. So this is the same, not the same motor. Let's have a look. So it looks very similar. Let me see. 540 RS 540SH. RS 540SH BDO 13223 BDO 116625. So they are they are possibly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one. This is apparently the torque tuned motor, uh, and this is apparently what they call the silver can motor. But this torque tuned motor doesn't say you know torque tuned on it, um, but it does say caution hot motor. So maybe that's a that's the indication. I'll put that aside for something else. I'm not sure what, but something else. Let's have a look at the book. That's going to be upside down for you because I can't read upside down. And we'll see what you have to assemble first. Okay, so it looks like you start with the gearbox. So that will be you know, most of this gear, I'd say. Um, what else is there? Oh, there's that stuff it looks like it's all all in there there'll probably be some grease involved i guess i don't know if there is a tube of grease in here mm, i'm not seeing one that looks like it's pinion gears and stuff for shock absorbers um, and there will be some bearings now these have got those um these um, little plastic and brass bushes so that's where those will come into play uh, and so just by looking at it it looks like they're mostly the same one different and then looking at these there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen one two three four five six seven eight nine Ooh, might be in trouble here Dear me, I might have to go through my other bearings and see if I've got some extras, but there's one different and there is one different there. But maybe they give you some spares, because I think they do often say in the instructions that you get some spares. Parts bag D is highly unlikely. You usually start with parts bag A, um, but I will have a look at that when we get there. Um, metal bearings, so that's the metal one and the plastic ones. BB... It looks like that's probably right. So now because I'm doing this in real time, I don't get to sort of cut out the whole not being sure about things and having to figure out where things go and how they work together and stuff. So you're going to be seeing this happen in real time and there's not much that I can do about that other than just carefully take my time and go through it. So please be patient, share the love. Um, and I will do the best I can. Doesn't mean I'm going to be successful. It means I'm going to do the best that I can. All right. Uh, is this body kit stuff? Let me see. What's that? No. That is more sort of uh, important information concerning this kit. Okay. All right. The Hornet. What does it say about the Hornet? This high-performance RC assembly kit features excellent handling for powerful running on both uh, on-road and off-road surfaces. Okay. Nice. 
Sounds good. I think it'll be fun. All right, let's have a look at uh, what will be required. So step one is attaching the rear end shaft. So we've got MD, uh, BD. So we've got one, that's for step two. Yeah, it looks a little bit, a little bit tricky, but that's okay. Um, apply grease to the places shown by this mark. Uh, yeah. Parts marked with that sort of funny symbol are not included in the kit. Apply grease first, then assemble. Okay. Study and understand the instructions thoroughly. Yeah, I should probably read these in order. Okay. Um, right. So it looks like it's a lot of this gear because that looks like the housings for it. So that is uh, it's the oil thing. Let's see. Let me see. B. Okay. So I've got. B4, yeah, okay. B4. A lot of shafts and stuff to go on there. So it looks like that, that. Um, there's some grease. So it could be, could be some of this gear, but possibly not because it looks like they're the tops of the dampers and stuff. BB3, okay, let's have a look. I mean, it might be plastic shafts, I don't know. Um, a. D, nope. So let's have a look in here. Quite possibly. Some of these could well be. doesn't look like any kit that I've done before. I wonder if it tells you where you find BB3. I think if I go to the back of the book, it says that. So this is the thing. When you see these on... Um, see people do these uh, on videos that... They cut out this part. Screw bag. BB. So, yeah. Oh, parts bag B. All right. So, you often need things from other bags. 5 by 30. Yeah, that's about right. You need that long one, which is, again, it's not sort of shown on there, but there it is, BD3. Yeah. have to keep, keep flicking BD so that's in the screw bag again there's a spacer
Yeah. So that's the damper parts bag. My bag, differential gear bag, metal bearing bag, screw bag, B, C, B, A. So that's A, B, C, and D. Okay. I get what I mean. I'm slowly getting it. All right. So basically, where it says B, A, B, 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 C, they mean bag A, B, C, D. Okay. Uh, and this is the damper parts bag. So that's that one. That's going to be a fun job. Lucky I've got a little stand that I can hopefully set up uh, dampers in. We'll see how it goes, hey? All right. So, you know, maybe tonight's... Um, tonight's progress will be that I get the, the rear gearbox made. I'm not sure. I will need some screwdrivers and I will need some grease and I'm running out of space already. So just let me uh, faff around here while I get things out and ready to roll. So I'll need a screwdriver and I will need some driver bits. And I will probably also need some grease. And I think that's all I need to start. I will need, I might need some small pliers to snap things together. And I will probably, um, probably, probably need some, some snips to cut things off of the screw. So let's get some snips. All right, so what do I need first? I need MD13, which I think is in the damper bag. Uh, MD13 is the rear axle shaft, and that's in the damper bag. So let's get that one out. And I'm going to put everything back in the uh, back in that Hornet box when I'm done. Now there are two of them, are they the same? They look identical, MD13, and then I've got to get VM1, and I need to grease VM1, and they look the same to me. There's the large bevel gear. Looks like looks like there's two of them. So let's orient these the same way they are in the in the picture. Large bevel gear goes on there. Like that. Okay. And I need VM1, which is the small metal bearing so here we go i do like when people give me stickers that's handy big fan of getting stickers i've got some plague bearings and i've got some rc jazz stickers as well so thank you to everyone that sent me stickers so now there's a i'll probably grease this i think before i put it in the housing just because otherwise i'm going to have grease all over my page here and I think I've got this size bearing. I think I've got quite a few of them. The 1150s. Yeah, that's it. So let me just see. So I need the spacer. Uh, the spacer was in... BD3, that's this one, let me snip this open, I 
there's a spacer there. This is going to need some grease on it anyway. And then I need B4. Uh, B4, that's that one. The problem can be that you get parts everywhere. So it's very difficult to keep track of where everything is, but that's okay. So that's oriented that way. Okay, so now I need to uh, put a bearing on there and it goes through that lower hole. Okay, so let me get a bearing. Like that, and then it's going to go into there. Lovely. All right, so let's start with some grease. some grease on there there we go it's spread nicely okay so then I've got that one is going to go through there and then another bearing goes on the end of it through there so that is going to go in there and then another bearing has to go on the end I'm just going to put a bit more grease on it. I'm going to stuff a bit down here, I think. Stuff a bit more grease on there. And shove that in there. Lovely. Okay, so that's that one done with the bevel gear. Then I've got this small shaft, BM2. Oh, sorry, BM2 is that one, uh, BB3, so I've got to open parts bag B. There's parts bag B and there's that little shaft that is needed. When I've lost that little bearing later on, just remind me it's in, it's where the scissors are. Right, so there is a small shaft here. Uh, what do we call this? I just call it a shaft. Uh, and then it's got to have a bearing on the end. And then the little bearing goes in the end of this gear, right, which is this one. MR6, the counter gear. One, and this is going to require a fair whack of. Well, that's just going in the end there. Okay. Uh, that's the small gears going in there. And then the big, big one in there. Okay. And again, plenty of grease needed. In fact, while that is now sort of captive in there, I will put some grease. There you go, nice dab of schmoo on it. Now that's a bit rescued. All right, so the next part is this one. I need to grease up the shaft. Uh, and put a bearing on it. So let me. If it turns out that some of these are um, needed for other things. I'll just. Oh, did I just drop them? I did. There we go. Put one on there. Lovely. 
uh, and then that's going to sit in there. It's going to go that way. And then the wee one goes in the end. Grease. Spooge. Lovely. All right. So that's going to go down there, and then that sits in here. Oh, now that one actually had to go in before that one. But that's okay, because I can just sort of pop that out of the way. Drop that in. Pop that back in. Like that. And we are fixed again. And I'll also put a bit of spooge on there. This is the grease that they use on fishing reels, apparently. For anyone that's not, not watched before, that's where this is from. All right, so that's in. Yeah, it does kind of show that one's going to go in first, but then it shows the first step is putting that bevel gear on, which is a bit, a bit weird. Okay. So once that's in, um, what's this? This is the other side of it, B3. So I kind of have to set this aside. Now I have to get B3, which is this one. Don't use snips that you care about, in my experience. Okay, so now B3, I'm going to also try and orient the same way it is in the picture. Uh, and this is the other uh, bevel gear on the other shaft there. So. so there's another bevel gear. And then there's a B1. Here's the, uh, the little cap and that goes on with two three by 12 millimeter uh, screws. Let's also try and do this where it's easy to see, but unfortunately I usually end up doing this up by my face because it's easier for me. All right, so there's a bearing that goes on there. There we go, yeah. Grease it up, lovely. in there we go fantastic bit of grease on there bearing in there shove it in there we go perla all right, so that's that one done. So now the differential gears, oh, that looks no fun. So now I'm gonna get these three together. This looks awful. I'm gonna to have to move this, sorry. Sorry, everyone. This looks quite complex. Uh, and complex and me don't necessarily mix. So I'm just gonna move that out the front there so I can have these on a sort of clean surface. All right, so I've got the three bevel gears and that one. All 
and I'm slightly concerned that I have gear left over, <laughs> which I, I don't think that's the pinion gear for the motor. I think that's elsewhere. Right, so these bevel gears have got a little shaft. Uh, B, D, 4, so parts bag D. So these little one, no, there's three of them. One, two, three. I'd say that's them. I'm going to put the others back in. I'll need them later on. I get why people make these little. Uh, I reckon there might be a spare. Why people make smaller uh, parts trays. Right, BD4. So there's three bevel gears that have to go in here like this. So they just sort of put a, put a thing through. Uh, and all the gears, and all the shafts have got to be greased. So what I might do is just squeeze a bit through here. I think that might be the best way is to just sort of squidge a bit through and then I can lube them up once it's together. So squidge the first and then the first one has to, oh God, uh, they all face inward like this. There we go, one. Two. So that's that, They're all sitting down nicely. So a bit of a bit of grease on them, across them, around them. That should be okay. Right, and now it has to go through. Oh, there's a tiny little shaft. Ooh. A tiny little shaft, BA1. Can I see it in there? BA1. Let me see if I can see it. see it look at that it's it is mega tiny oh my gosh it's got some small pieces this one does uh i think what they did is they made these easier to make got on and thinking oh i'll build an old one it'll be simpler was a bit of a mistake it was definitely a uh a joey on my part because look at the size of it Right, so that shaft has to go through and then it sits in the end of those little pieces in there. So what I might end up doing is sort of put it through and then drop it in on there. I think that might be the sort of put it on there, put it in there. and see if I can drop it. I 
see if I can sort of get the it seems to be meshing and then I've got to try and get that on there Ooh. And then that's going to go in the end of there and the index and everything's going to mesh nicely. My gosh, I think I've done it. Uh, and then there's a, a cover to go on there, which I should have put on in the previous step, but that's okay. We'll... Uh, Forgive my, I'll forgive myself that. I'm just going to find a rag just to try and degrease my fingers a little bit. All right. Well, that was shocking. Uh, three by 12s all in bag B1. Oh, that's A. This is B. The only thing is they sometimes show points on them on the screws and they, they often don't have points on them. Right, and let's have a look at that cover. B1 is the cover, which is that one there, the little oil cover thing that you probably wouldn't look at and go, oh, that's an important piece. And that also attaches with a 3x12 screw. And that goes over this part here. That way around. Now when I do these I still put a bit of grease on there just to sort of help the thread cut a little bit plus a little bit of extra grease in the gearbox probably isn't a terrible thing. So, uh, two, one. a ratcheting driver is so helpful doing these kits. If you're starting out, get a ratcheting driver. That's the only advice I can give that's worth anything. And now when I turn that, I can see that gear is turning nicely. It sounds okay. Grease is being distributed. You can also squidge a little bit extra in there now. If I can get the tube to play nice. There we go. Plenty. All right. So now we'll put the uh, pieces on and I will uh, use one, two, three, four 12 millimeter screws. And it goes around that way. Like that, like that, I believe. It's like that. Yeah, so then four 12 mil screws go through from this side. So I'll put one, two, three, I think, and four. One, two, three, four. So I think those two are probably for the motor mount. Try and sort of go opposites as well if you can. Can't hurt. I think just less likely to strip them out.
and one in there, I think. Could be wrong. It does look like there's one in there. Okay. Sounds good. It's moving. Now when I turn it, that shaft is turning. The gears are turning. Everything's turning. The bearings might need to seat a little bit lower in there. There's a bit of play, but that's okay. All right. Lovely. So the next part is the pinion gear. So it's an 18 tooth pinion gear. I need to put these back in. Put these back in so I don't lose them. Maybe I need a set of sandwich bags or something so I can re-bag them up as bag A, B, C and D and then I can reseal them. Maybe that's maybe that's my solution, but I'm sure that's probably not popular. I'm sure the, the containers is probably a better option. All right. So the next thing I need is to set that aside, the transmission. So I'm up to here. I need these items. So these are all from bag uh, A and C. And then I need the motor and the pinion gear. So... Is there a particular, oh, there's a cover that goes on. Uh, and then some long screws that go through there. Okay. All right. So let's grab the motor. There's the motor. Um, where will I find the pinion gear? Good question. D. Uh, there is bag D. There's no say so that might be the pinion gear. Well, I guess sheer sheer luck. I'd say that's it there. This might be the last part for the evening. But sometimes, you know, it's little steps. Uh, let's have a look. Does this, does this look like a pin in here? Yeah, it kind of does. And it's very light. And there also should be a teeny tiny set screw. Which... I am not seeing, but maybe it's in there. Is it in there? Does not look like it's in there. Oh, bag C7. Okay. Phew. Uh, there it is. I can see it down there. Tiny little bugger. Okay. Got greasy hands, so I can't remove that. But that did it. What is this sharp? Oh, yes, it does have a flat on it. So that's handy. Something to point that at. Now, this might be the chance that I get to use my very extra fancy uh, new ratcheting driver so let me just see here it is
this one right. This is my uh, Anex Annex um, ratcheting driver, which is apparently the same as the Tamiya. It's just Tamiya rebranded. Oh, don't want that. Those magnets and that motor are very good. Right, let's see. Let's You want it enough to just slide on. That'll do. I don't know how far this is meant to go in. Um, is there a guide? 16 millimeters. 16 mil from the end of the can to there. Well, that's way less than that. Probably going to end up with that almost all the way down, I'd have thought. Let me see if I've got some kind of measuring tool that I could, um, that I could confirm that with. Let me see. Sixteen millimeters. I'll leave that there and I will go with this I don't know how I'm going to do this but I'm going to I'll try and I'll try and orient this so I can do it bit over 15.95 so hopefully that's going to be right and that looks like it's nice and square on the shaft so I'm going to call that done there we go we'll see how how critical that measurement is later on all right so that's on now I need to get the Wii cover which is this one uh, b2 are you thinking that that's right, B1? Yep. I think I am B2. And B, C1. So from bag C, A, Probably the two very long ones. One. 3 by 27? Nope. Now, yeah, 2 by Now, 1. Bloody lovely. 1, 2. That must be for the uh, suspension. Alright, so I need them. That. They go through there. Lovely. And. Be A2. I don't need that yet. So let's have a look. This should be sitting this way. No, no. That way. And this should line up with the holes through there. Okay. It's a bit fiddly.
I don't know how it's meant to line up. And it's also only got two holes that line up, so. This is going to be a very fiddly job. I guess you start with one. You say one, let's go for one. This might be the uh, crescendo of the evening, I think. Although, what? I'm silly, because I should have done it like this. I should have done like that, and then knowing that I had one started. Oh, I had it. I had it. I'll get it. I'm just doing this wrong-handed. You know what I need to do? I need to manipulate with my left and screw with my right. I need to make sure that only two of these holes are threaded. And I'm getting more grease on anything that's not meant to be greasy than anything else. Here we go. There we go. How do you like me now? Yeah, that's one. There we go, son. One motor attached. Lovely. And I'm guessing that it's meshed nicely because you can't do much else to set the mesh. All right, so that's that part done. Then there are some bits that go over here uh, on that side, which are D6. Let me get sprue D. Is that D? Let me, see. yes, it is D. D6 and D2, those two there. I'm kind of hoping that's most of the fiddly bits done. But I have a feeling that is not correct. What I worry about is that I'm going to spend a lot of time on this car and get emotionally attached to it, which was exactly the reason that I decided to do this car, was so I wouldn't get emotionally attached. Because the idea is I'm meant to not be upset if I crash it, but if it takes me hours and hours of hard labor to uh, get it done, that will be a shame. All right, so the motor is on that side. That's upside down. So that's going to be the one that goes that way. I'm late. That's the one that goes the other side. And I need BA2. So these little step screws. Um, I should probably put some spooge in the holes, shouldn't I? By the way, I'm hoping to do a live stream before the channel gets shut down through student involvement. I'm hoping to get a, a live stream of question and answer. So if you've got a question, please feel free to pose it. Uh, there is a, a, a post on the community tab. But I'd also happily record them from anyone's uh, postings on the on the stream itself or in the comment section. If you have a question, please ask away because it's not interesting if no one asks any questions. Maybe I'm that good at explaining stuff that no one has any questions. Apart from why the hell are you doing this? Do you realize, I, you know what, I just realized how many other woodworkers 
our teachers tonight. And uh, I can easily say I am the worst uh, YouTube woodwork teacher quite comfortably. I don't practice enough. I'd love to practice. I need some help to uh, put the rest of the saw together. All right, so we've got that done. Do I try and attach it to no hand because that can't go on? The rest of the stuff is now attaching stuff to the tub. Uh, do I leave it at the end of step three? Maybe. We're at 56 minutes. Um, there's a wash uh, and a thing that goes through there. Oh, let's see. Why not? This, if I do this, it gets stuff getting attached to this, which would help probably, wouldn't it? All right. File that away. So here's the tub as it is in the in the book. And then D, whatever D is, there's D. It's got some funny things to cut off, which are these two bits here. Cut those buggers off. Now one that uses some fiddly beats up from the bag so I won't lose them later on. So there's that. Let's go with that idea. All right, so we've got those two bits, and then I need uh, MD19, which is from... Nope. Let me double check where MD19 comes from. One moment. MD19 flange nut, and it comes from the damper parts bag. Okay. So that would be from in here, probably in there. BA6 is uh, a washer, three millimeter washer. It's a round one though. So I'm guessing it's not the O rings. Um, oh, BA6. So there's some washers in here. So there's step four, BA6, BC2. So there's only two washers needed. One, it's not a three millimeter thick washer. It's a three millimeter holy washer. Like that. They're the same, yeah. All right, and then I need the BC2 3 by 15 screw 1 2 I'm sure you've probably seen other people who know what they're doing you can actually size it up on the on the book All right BC2 and then MD19 which will be these little flange nuts. I reckon these are right. Let me just check one. Check me one time. That'll be the one, one, two, lovely, all right, so we got them, them, and them, all right, so where we got from the tub pointing this way, we've got them going in like that, lovely, where's our silly bits, uh, Knobs pointing up. Uh, 
Right, so there's bolt with a washer, like that. And it goes through there. And they go through there somehow. How do they go through? Like that, like just push in. I just shove in for good measure. Get your shoving ready. Just shove them in. And then attach them with a nut. Now I'd have thought that maybe there would have been another washer on the other side, but only shows. Only shows MD19 and only one washer after the shoving. So shove them up there, shove these through them, and then securely fix them with the supplied flange nut. There we go. Okay. Then, what is that? Oh, God, there's a spring involved. This always goes wrong. D12, rear axle support. Um, I can just see something going, bing. <laughs> Position the spring. This, this should be a video on its own. There will be great comedy in this part. This is the last bit, right? To be honest, if I get this done with... The amount of tiredness currently being experienced without losing a spring or an eye or both. All right. So I need a 3 by 12 screw and I need the spring. It looks like we go around that way. I'm just orienting this the same as the book. Like that. Okay. Now I saw some springs. Where do I see the bloody springs? I say bloody because this is never going to go well. This shall not end well. Right, they're linkages. Where are the bloody springs? The damper springs. Where are the second springs? Oh, here they are. Here is the bag of joy. Uh, and three by twelve, so BB. This, ladies and gentlemen. This is the stuff nightmares are made of for me. When you've got no confidence, put together something spring-loaded, because that will fill you with confidence. All right, two of them. All righty, got a screwdriver somewhere. There's one. Never mind, this will do. Okay, let's see. What do we have to do? We have to get a spring, MD12. So that bit is pointing down like that. Here's BB1. We have to put that through there. And then put that in there like that and then I've got to tension that up over there and somehow 
put a screw through there. So I've done that part, I've got that through the hole. So both the same. So one, put a screw through here, this piece, so here we go. And then position this on top of the screw, I'm guessing. I think. So now that's on there. Then I'm going to go like right, boing, and put that on there. I think. So it's got put the screw through while that's through there. And then right, put that on top. This is awful. This is filling me with dread. Right, so that one and that there, like that. Then put a screw in and then tension the screw. I can't leave these overnight. They're going to go putting. Now, if any students are watching and you hear me swear, if you're working on something spring-loaded and it suddenly becomes not spring-loaded anymore, you're allowed to swear. It's a rule. All right. So that's in there. And then I have to go right. Hold that there. Stay there. Oh, God. I, I don't want to look away from them. Oh god, now I've got a grease in there. Oh jeez. I don't want to do this. Oh, you can detach the screws after you have installed a gearbox. This is horrid. Why is there a why is there a shaft there? There's no shaft anywhere else. What what shaft is it? Where's, where's the, um, is there meant to be a shaft on this? Did I miss a bit? I don't recall a bit where there's an extra shaft sticking out of anywhere. What do they mean? Is there? There's nothing there. Can I mean this? Could could I mean that bit? That's probably the right length to go through there, isn't it? That's probably what they mean. But you know, it would be nice if it were named at some point. If it were maybe I don't know mentioned. MD14, 4 x 95 Okay, there it is. Oh, God. Okay, okay. So they've got to go through there. So it's got to go on like this. These need to go on there with the shaft through there. Right, okay. All right. I'll, I'm going to put a bit in here God, 
God's sake, don't touch it, James. Right. Okay, so motor's going out that side in the diagram. Shaft goes through. Right. So that's through. It's sticking through both sides now. So now it has to sit on top of the spring. Which is now showing the bloody other direction. And they go into the back of somewhere, into the back of the tub there. Oh, it's upside down. Okay. All right. So that goes that way up. And then these sit on. And it's going to be above there. Dear God, that was nerve wracking. All right, I think that's the way it goes. And then I take out those screws afterwards, and that is that is then sprung on those two tiny ass springs. So that's interesting. And then I can also use those those screws to help, hopefully. Is it gonna go ping? I mean, oh dear. I mean, oh, fiddle dee Fee-fi-fo-fum, that was a close one. Right, let's put some spooge down the holes. Let's spooge the holes. Spooge.
get one to start it. So hopefully it doesn't come undone. That was a bad move. All right, if you're building one, put those two in before you take that one out. Don't think you can be cheap and... I still can't get that one all the way in. So what I'm probably going to end up doing, I'll probably strip that hole slightly. But then again, maybe I'll be okay. But I didn't put heaps of grease on it when I went to put it in. So I'm going to... I'm going to take that one out. See what I can do with it. Maybe I've just hit like a, a hard spot. Sometimes a little grease is all you need. There it was. Ping. <gasps> okay. Right, well now I have to attach the top, don't I? So the top mounts now need to go in. And then I can probably leave it there. Alright, so they're in. Um, where are those pieces? They're probably in the box still. I have a feeling they are still in the box, those side pieces. I was going to stop after an hour, now I'm an hour or 20. I hope I'm not putting anyone off. It probably is quite an easy model to do. C2. have to make a, a vote for what colour people think it should be. What colour should the Hornet be? See, I think blue because I'm thinking Charlotte Hornets. Because I'm a... I was an old school NBA fan. This is definitely, this is the last stage tonight, because I'm probably meant to be doing something that earns money tonight, but, you know, sometimes it's just hard to motivate yourself to do anything that's worth doing. Uh, this is one. So it looks like there's only two screws that are going in.
three by twelves. More three by twelves. Grab a few. Hopefully that's should do it. Okay, so there's one that's gotta go through here. Ooh. Okay, note to self, don't do that again. Duly noted. It seems like, yeah, it's one of those things that I looks and looks and feels like I missed a stage, but. Maybe I'll read the book later and realize that I have. Or maybe I'll look back real and later on and realize, no, nope, I hadn't. That's just the unnerving bit that I was up to. Okay, one sort of, oh, now I've got to do the, the shocks, uh, that's not going to be fun. Okay, well, good to know, right, so there's a damper cylinder. Be careful not to damage your rod. All right, I'm going to leave it there. It's an hour and a half. I think that's pretty good for one night. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, leaving a comment, uh, telling me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'll probably agree with you. Uh, I will be back sometime, probably in a week, with the next installment of the Hornet build. And hopefully by then I have mustered up the courage to start building the shock absorbers. Until then, please keep your bananas where you can see them. See you later.